Hi, Nathaniel Ruffeljantz here from Nintendo Prime, and I want to take a moment to talk to you guys about misreporting information. This is actually something that is all too common, unfortunately, not only right here on YouTube, but in general in the video game news slash discussion space. Now, sometimes it gets confusing because discussions and opinions get intermixed with news. I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about literal information that gets misinterpreted in unintentional ways. Now, if you're watching this after watching my previous video and you're a fan of Digital Foundry, you might think this video exists because of that. I'll get into that in a moment, but that's not actually why. There's actually something else that happened today slash yesterday I want to talk about that really impacts just how we obtain information. So my Nintendo News, Nintendo Everything, Go Nintendo, and many other news outlets reported that we were getting a Switch update. Firmware 11.4, some immediate, the almost dropping today sort of update to the Switch's firmware. Turns out that's not true. What happened is Nintendo updated their banned word list in the operating system, but that's it. There was no actual firmware update coming out. And this came to my attention because Nintendo Everything actually put out on Twitter, hey, thought we'd take a second to clear up some inaccurate news slash weirdness happening over the past day or so. First, there's no real Switch firmware update happening soon, at least as it has been reported this week. Nintendo simply updated the lineup of blocked words yesterday. There's no update to download. Second, it's true the adventure of Super Mario Bros. 3 is removed from Netflix, but seemingly only in the UK, while it's happening on March 31st, is unlikely related to Nintendo's plans to remove 3D All-Stars. Slash Mario 35 may just be since it's shifting to Paramount+. Plus. Anyway, just a reminder to be careful what you read out there. We're not perfect ourselves, but we try to focus on putting up posts that make the most sense. And Here's the thing. One, I appreciate the clarity from Nintendo Everything on this. I actually know the guy personally who runs that place, and I know he never means to put out misinformation. There's a lot of things that Nintendo Everything will even stay away from, rumors and leak-wise, to prevent the spreading of misinformation. And I think labels on things obviously help. When you label something as a rumor or a leak, either in the title or literally in the first bit of the content, you know, like if I'm making a video and the title says something, and then right away I'm like, hey, we got some new rumors and leaks for you today. That puts an air of doubt on the information, or if not doubt, caution, because I can't confirm or deny whether that information is true or not. So talking about leaks and rumors is one thing. And yes, a lot of misinformation can spread through leaks and rumors, but they are leaks and rumors. They're not definitive information. But if you come out and you say something like, hey, watch out today, we're getting an update to the Nintendo Switch's firmware, but we're really not. That is how misinformation spreads. And this came because there was a Twitter user who put out there that, hey, look, data mining tells me that we're getting a firmware update today. That data mine was incorrect. It just meant they were updating the word filter. This is what happens when information is misrepresented. And this is where I'll get into a little bit, I guess, of what happened in my last video. So in my last video, we had a bunch of information about the Switch Pro or Switch revision, or new Nintendo Switch, or something. There basically seems to be two things happening with the Switch. A new model Switch, that's like a pro version, and then obviously potentially an update to the original SOC, uh, you know, a, a new chip or something. It, it, it's nothing to really write home about. I don't think it's worth talking about personally, but it is what it is. Everyone's going to have their own personal feelings on that. But what happened in this report, and when I was talking about some factual information coming from NVIDIA's hiring post, along with a bunch of information that came from certain leakers on Reset Era, is we talked at length about Digital Foundry, because they recently did a podcast. And I think what happened here is that Digital Foundry was talking at length about the OLED 720p screen, 7 inches, all this jazz, uh, and then comparing it, saying that it was going to be a Tiger X1. What it turns out that they were talking about in that podcast was just about a potential XL switch or just a potential revision of the current switch, not a pro model. But to me, this wasn't made clear in how they talked about it. And that's likely because the pro model is directly associated with the 720p OLED. And the way they transitioned the conversation from the 720p OLED screen into this talk kind of made it sound like they were all talking about the same system. And I'm not the only one that felt this way. If you get outside of the Digital Foundry bubble, 
a lot of the internet feels like Digital Foundry was trying to tell us the Switch Pro is going to just have a Tegra X1 in it. That is literally what it sounded like. Now, I have actually talked to John Linneman on Twitter because uh, he was kind of upset at the title where I said Digital Foundry is wrong, which, by the way, technically you can argue no one can be confirmed as wrong yet because, well... We don't actually have any direct information from Nintendo. However, in defense of me, that I, I was saying that they were wrong in terms of having that X1 as the Switch Pro, which is not what they intended at all. And John Linneman actually agrees. The Switch Pro is not going to have a Tegra X1 in it. And he wanted to clarify with me that is not what they meant. And that is totally fine. But this is where how misinformation gets spread. So if you watch my video, you're going to come to think that Digital Foundry intended their conversation to be about the Switch Pro, when really their conversation was just about a potential Switch revision down the line, using the AULA um, update that we saw in the firmware last year, which looks like it's just another Tiger X1 chip. So it doesn't really sound like something they would put in a Pro. Now, what's interesting about this and how the misinformation spreads is I don't think there's enough communication across the board. And I think there's a lot of uh, incentive for people to get angry at others. I've been insulted today, maybe more than I've been insulted in quite some time. And I'm, I'm often called fat, I'm called lazy, I'm called all sorts of names. And reality is I obviously don't like being called that stuff. Nobody does, but that's the way the internet goes. When someone gets something wrong, we attack, 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 and assume the illest of things. As an example, I invited John Lindemann from Digital Foundry to come have a conversation on my channel about this to clarify to people outside of Digital Foundry's bubble. Because maybe the fans inside the Digital Foundry bubble understood, but to the outside looking in, it definitely is a little bit confusing. So I, I extended a hand. He's obviously, he told me he's too busy and all that, and that's fine. I understand it's his job, his career, he's packed, he's got a lot of stuff on his plate. He's not going to have time to come on and have a conversation about it. But the point is, people think I did that to draw attention to my channel from the Digital Foundry fan base. No. I didn't say Digital Foundry was wrong in that video to get their attention. I didn't say, I didn't invite John and Lemon on to have a conversation because I care about drawing in the Digital Foundry fan base. In fact, I didn't think Digital Foundry was going to see that video at all. I, I, I didn't care about that. I literally do not care. I have a job that's not online. People keep asking me what that job is. F fine, I'll put it out there. I work in IT. I'm an IT guy for a company that I'm not allowed to talk about. So when I talked in the past about how I'm not allowed to say anything about my job, that's what I meant. I work in IT and I can't talk about anything at the company. It's all confidential stuff. That's just how it goes. I can't talk about my job, but I am an IT guy. I'm also in college to be a computer programmer. I've been in IT for a while. I've had prior IT jobs. I've also worked in manufacturing with motherboards and, yes, CPUs. I've worked on the manufacturing side of this. I've worked on the IT side, and I'm going to eventually be working on the programming side. I'll we'll have been on basically every side of hardware for computers that there can be. I'm also an enthusiast. I love building my own PCs, not literally the motherboard stuff. Making the motherboard and chipsets are weren't really that fun, to be honest. And I did some final inspection on this. Not fun. Those jobs aren't fun. But building, like the act of putting PC components together and building a computer, great. I love it. The act of taking apart the Xbox Series X like I did last year and putting some liquid metal on it, really, really fun. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. So I'm a big tech enthusiast. I've obviously all been involved in technology since I was a little kid when my dad helped me build my very first PC when I was nine. Honestly, I'm really into this stuff. And I hate how misinformation gets spread out there, not just about myself and obviously about Digital Foundry, which I did apologize to John Linneman about that misinformation, but I explained to him how it ended up being taken that way. And I think he understands. He's a pretty understanding person. We're all humans. We all make mistakes. And the same thing with Nintendo, everything and all the outlets that got the firmware update wrong. We need to be careful about the information that gets out there. You figure we should be after what we just went through in American politics, but reality is American politics is chock full of misinformation as everyone's trying to push you into their agenda. But And maybe it's politics that is the root cause of this, but everyone feels like there's a certain agenda tied to everything. I don't think Digital Foundry had an agenda 
with their video and just giving their honest thoughts about various Switch stuff and other video game related things. I didn't have an agenda in making that video and saying Digital Foundry was wrong other than trying to correct people that were saying that Digital Foundry you know, was claiming Switch Pro would be X, Y, and Z when that really wasn't what they said, but I took that as maybe that's what they said because that's what I got out of their video. So I'm apologized to them, just like Nintendo Everything apologized to everyone else for their mis their misreporting. But guys, we need to be careful about the information we get, okay? We need to be careful. We, we live in a landscape where Nintendo and these other companies don't always give you the news directly, Okay, that, that, that's not a thing. They're not emailing all of us directly all the time. You know, Microsoft's doing this whole uh, talking about Bethesda thing tomorrow. They didn't do that by contacting each Xbox fan directly. You often hear about it from IGN or Kotaku or various YouTubers. And that's good. But also, you got to be careful. Now, can people like me and others that report on this stuff do better? Absolutely. And I think we all strive to do better. As a person who creates content that covers news, but also discusses and gives opinions, and often the line is blurred between those opinions and conversation pieces and news, I realize it can get confusing as a viewer which one of my videos are discussion, which ones are news. And maybe I could do something in the thumbnail to maybe indicate more that this is discussion versus this is news. That's something that, you know, maybe I could work on a template or something for that. But beyond that, I just want you guys to know I apologize for any misreporting I've ever done, either now, in the past, or in the future. No, it's not intentional. No, all of us are just trying to do the best we can to get you guys as accurate as, of information as we can. And when we make mistakes, I feel it's important to own up to it. So, yes, I'm sorry to Digital Foundry. I made a mistake. It happens. No, I will not be updating the title of that video. Why? Not to get views. That video is getting the same kind of views my videos on Switch Pro always get. But because I don't run from my mistakes, I don't hide from my mistakes, but I will apologize for them. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. None of us are perfect. But you know what? We're all just trying to get by and do the very best we can in this industry and enjoy games and technology together. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope that you got something out of this video. I know it's a little bit of a rambler, but hey, at least I think I look pretty good, huh? I'm not sure about this black with the with the salmon. You guys let me know what you think about black on salmon. I don't know. Good look or not? Catch you guys in the next video.